I'm not a big, I don't care about money. I just want to not worry about going to Tim Hortons, not Tim Hortons. Sorry, not, but I, I, you know what I mean? I just, I don't want to worry about minor expenses like buying a coffee once in a while. Other than that, I'm happy. And there's Leo, Mouth of the South, also from Windsor. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction, sir? You were down at the border at the Ambassador Bridge, the Windsor Detroit border. Uh, this, you know, to some degree affects or was is related to what you guys were going through down there as well, because they they invoked the Emergencies Act because of the other protests outside of Ottawa as well. What's your reaction, Leo? This is what happened, and uh, I was a pretty big part of it, I guess, being the mouth of the South, uh, and it's an honor to be here with Tom and uh, and Gail and Rick, by the way. Uh, they used the quote for me as they had a pass, uh, uh, as if uh, freelance journalists uh, through the Associated Press, okay, and I, they were using my recordings, the Associated Press, okay, and doing their news articles with it, uh, and somebody quoted that they would die for the cause, and that's how they got the injunction. It's by that, okay? And uh, the, that's how they, they justified going in there heavy-handed, okay, and shutting it down. And it was an injunction. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it, but I do know one thing. If Trudeau is going to get his panties sued off by the looks of what's going to happen, he will use the notwithstanding clause, okay? And once that's in effect, guess what? Nobody gets nothing because he's a slime ball. Oh. And if you know anything about the notwithstanding clause, the government has the right, once it's ruled in the Supreme Court, if it don't rule in their favor, they don't like it, they could use that clause, and they will. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that, Tom? Yeah, so, you know, it's tricky with the, the notwithstanding clause, and you can contrast that with Section 1. You know, and Section 1 has this, this little phraseology in there that says, you know, that the, the government has the right to basically... Uh, suspend or take away your rights if they can demonstrably justify their actions, right? Which is one thing. And the second thing is section 33 of the charter talks about the notwithstanding clause. And here's an interesting thing about section 33. Section six, which is your mobility rights, is exempt from section 33. So you can't there's no provision in the Charter of Rights or in the Constitution that allows you to violate somebody's mobility rights. So all of these provinces that were refusing uh, Canadians to enter, like New Brunswick, PEI, Quebec, stopping people from crossing over the border, were violating Charter rights. It is one of those, it was so important, I spoke to Brian Peckford about this, it was so important to them not to have the ability to stop a Canadian from going to and from uh, Canada or in between the provinces. They even considered a pandemic was not justification enough to allow the notwithstanding clause of Section 33. So the government can't do it. But because of Section 1, they routinely can come out and say, yeah, you know what, we the government did violate your rights, but because of Section 1, they could demonstrably uh, justify it. And so we're going to allow it. So it get, there's two sections in the charter that make it kind of difficult for people to defend themselves where in one case you think it's clear cut. But the one thing I want to say with section 33, that does have to go to parliament. They do have to vote on it and they can suspend the charter for, you know, I think up to five years um, and stop you from having whatever rights and pass legislation for a five-year period. So there's a lot of theory out there that, you know, Trudeau might pull some sort of scheme to stop the next election from happening. Um, I can tell you even the most hardcore liberals right now, I think would have a hard time canceling the next election and allowing to, to do it. Uh, I think what would happen is if he tried to pull this crap, there would be convoys all over Canada, not Ottawa, all over Canada. Well, I think I there'd be a big, yeah. I have a surprise coming for you guys. Uh, maybe you could mm -hmm. help me out with this one, Rick. I need, uh, I probably live a block and a half from uh, Brian Massey, and he's the uh, longest NDP, okay, uh, in the NDP caucus, okay. I don't want to go to his house, but I'm going to go to his office. I'm going to scrum him. Okay, because they're the ones that are holding this election back, is the NDP, period. Yes. 
if we put the pressure like we did in Ottawa on the NDP, and I mean put the pressure on them, and you protest, they're going to have to call for an election, or it's going to be the, yeah. the demise of their party. So I, I said right from like right after the convoy was over, I had always said that the most powerful Canadian right now in government was Jagmeet Singh because he's got this drug deal, this unholy alliance with Justin Trudeau. And there's only 25 NDP members of parliament. So really there's only one. They're like, to be honest, there's only one that's the leader of the NDP. He gives them their marching orders. If he doesn't, if they don't do what he tells them, he kicks them out of the party, right? So really one guy is holding the entire country hostage, except for the fact that I believe the block also voted against a vote of non-confidence last time. So as a redundancy for a, a non-confidence vote, they do have the block, but the reason people said that the NDP won't do it, they won't go to an election, is because they blew all their budget. They don't they can't fundraise. They couldn't they, they didn't have enough money in the coffers to run another election. So that's a big challenge. It's why the NDP are holding on, is because they don't have enough money to compete competitively in the next election. They're stalling to build up their bank accounts. Well, I'm going to I'm going to put the pressure on my NDP Brian Good. Massey. There's a few questions Good. I want to ask him and as a citizen of Canada, okay, I have the mm -hmm. right to ask any of my elected politicians the questions. They don't want to answer them, okay, they'll look like the fools. Okay, but I'm mm -hmm. doing my due diligence as a Canadian citizen and that's to ask the questions, okay, because there's a, quite a few questions I want to ask them. Okay, and the, one of it's the propping of uh, Trudeau because I've trained in the same gyms as Brian Massey, okay, uh and, and I've talked to him and his wife and uh, she, about Trudeau. And they said he's a wolf in a sheep's jacket. Okay, he's no good. He's a liar, this and that. But in the same token, they're the reason why he's still in power today, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a few things, okay? Like I said, I don't, I don't want to go to his house. That's pretty low if I got to go to his house. I'm not going to mm -hmm. go to his house. So I'm going to meet him at his office first thing in the morning, later on in the day. I'll be sitting out front of his office till he wants to speak, right? And I'll catch mm -hmm. him as he's going to his car. And uh, that's that's what we have to do, man. Like you said, there's only 25 NDP. Between all of us, you put the hammer down. Okay? Yeah. Nonviolently, you do it, okay, uh, mm -hmm. protest. And yes. You sit out front of their doors, you wave your flags, you wave your signs, okay, and they're going to fold, they're going to crumble because they may not have a party in the next election if they don't, straighten out their uh straighten out the books yeah you know what you know what the real problem is though it's the ceos of uh grocery stores that's the problem yeah. <laughs> oh that was ridiculous that was that's ridiculous all I, that's all I ever yeah i know you know you know why it's the problem of the ceos because the government has let in almost two million more mouths to feed and those are the ones we know about Okay, so of course the profit go up because people illegally coming into Canada through Roxham Road also had to buy food. Yeah. Well, that's another ridiculous. Topic, and that is yeah. never really examined. Yeah, I, I don't want to preach to the choir, but uh, right. I, I said it on Rick's show the other night. <sighs> I like to eat. I like to eat well. Well, my hmm? mortgage payment's only six hundred dollars a month. It's a low mortgage, but my grocery bill I'll waive my mortgage payment. That's just for one week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're headed down some crazy times, guys. I'm telling you. And I, I heard Jake Meat sing uh, today on the news uh, talk about the high price of uh, affordability in this country. Okay, they've had three years to get it done, and it's yeah. not getting done. It's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Like, what has this unholy alliance gotten the NDP in the last two years? Nothing. I asked my dentist, who's one of us. He's a freedom yeah. fighter. I said, what do you think of this dental bill? He says, I haven't seen anybody okay, uh, with free dental. No. no. The only thing that's going to do is jack up the price for mm -hmm. my insurance company because I'm paid, uh, or my dental's paid for my insurance company. Mm -hmm. they, uh, and the average guy is going to get the hammer. It's like the cost of living. You, you, make a lot, uh, you pay everybody $40 an hour, a loaf of bread goes to $15 an hour, or $15 mm -hmm. a loaf. Yep. Well, I think that's why uh, the next election might end up being closer than people think, because the liberals are very good at buying votes with social programs, using our own money to uh, to bribe us to vote for them. 
Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Gail, wh wh how does the media play into this moving moving ahead? Are we seeing any kind of a shift here in spite of the, the money that the, 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 the mainstream media is being given by the government? Well, I think what's shifting now is that uh, because of the wide range of other alternative media and, uh, you know, whether it's your show, I mean, I think recently what happened with Rebel News actually got them on the world stage, right? I mean, the, the government, I mean, the, that whole incident of arresting the one officer was probably the best thing ever to happen to Rebel News. My guess is they raised more money from that than recent campaigns. Um, so now... I think that's pushing some of the other media to cover things that, I mean, it may not always be as openly, but I think we're going to see more coverage and as more people start to look at finding other sources of news. Um, and that's what, that's what I'm noticing. Now, I, as I said, uh, I do see that because of Twitter, some news stories are now getting covered that wouldn't have got covered without uh, Twitter being around. So, um, and and you know, that's kind of where Leo comes in because he's saying he's going to go to Brian Massey's office, member of parliament, new Democrat, and sort of camp out there and scrum him as an independent uh, media influencer, right? I mean, the well, job of, yeah. under the disguise of Maverick Multimedia, I'll be freelancing again. <laughs> well, and mm -hmm. now you can get, I mean, uh, you know, so many more people, um, you know, there's there's ability to get news from so many different sources and there's pros and cons. I encourage people to, you know, I've had Peter Menzies on my show to talk about this from a perspective of, you know, he comes out of mainstream media. He was a publisher of the Calgary Herald. Um, and, you know, interestingly, back in the day, we would have been at opposite sides of the table. And now here I am interviewing him and listening to his perspective, which is, and it's interesting how we've both come now to, um, question some of the same things. So yeah, I think what we're going to see next is um, now there's a little bit of feedback. Is that? Yeah, I don't know. I think, let me just check. Leo, it's just because yeah, he's okay. in a factory. Okay. He's in a factory. There's a lot of background noise there. I didn't know where I was like, didn't know if it was me. Um, yeah, so yeah, and I've been following this as well. Like I said, how I first, I would never have known Tom I wouldn't have seen you through a media store. It was because of TikTok. And again, um, I haven't been as active on TikTok recently, but I sort of got into it more. Again, I do work in social media. So I help people use social media, you know, from a public relations mm -hmm. perspective. So when I was on TikTok, it was initially more for fun. And then mm -hmm. I started following things. And that's how I found out a lot about what was happening with the convoy. So uh, that's the other thing. I think people are getting um, information. And I tell people that are very smart in doing, only getting their information from one source. I said, well, but more people are getting it from different views. So whether it's, whether you're a business, whether you're a politician, you better be aware of this is the new reality. The digital world has changed drastically. And uh, when I had Peter Menzies on, that's what we talked about. I mean, the media's got sort of stuck in this holding on to um, protecting what was, and those days are gone. I mean, the, um, yeah, there is just so much diversity of information that we can uh, tap into now. And one so, last thing, you know, if we look at, too, the popularity, I mean, in the States, if you look at like a Joe Rogan, and again, I initially thought, Okay, I thought he was kind of a knuckle dragger, to be honest, until I went and listened to some of his two to three hour interviews and went, oh, wow, this was, he has views. And what he does is he lets people speak. Mm -hmm. I, I just uh, have been fascinated by some of the interviews I heard there. And that's where I think, that's where I heard Dr. Robert Malone being interviewed. And that was, that was a real changing point for me of hearing uh, another perspective, uh, especially after he had been banned in other places. So I encourage people to go listen to Dr. Robert Malone, very interesting uh, originator of the mRNA vaccine. So, And what do you guys think of the Canadian Constitution Foundation and the Canadian Civil Liberties Association? Uh, you know, I've even heard Ezra Levant criticizing them throughout the pandemic, saying, where are these guys? How come they're not stepping forward? And 
and defending people's rights and freedoms. And actually, I think even using that, Gail, to raise funds at times by saying, mm -hmm. it's us, we're the champions of the, the little guy and, and Canadians. But um, here we are and, and they've stepped up and, and they, we've, we seem to have some sort of positive result. What's, what's your reaction? Tom, I'll start with you. Sure, sure. Well, I, you know, Ezra's a businessman. Uh, he used to have, it started off as, remember, fight the fines. It transitioned into the Democracy Fund. With the Democracy Fund, they were able to bring on Alan Honor as their head litigator. And so they do have a team now. So Rebel, by extension, has their own sort of law firm. Ezra himself is a lawyer. And so that's something that they're able to do where you take uh, some of the lesser known law firms. I mean, look at the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. I mean, they, you know, uh, um, amongst people who support the convoy, JCCF is kind of a household name. They're able to fundraise because they're a law firm that does fundraising as well and has done phenomenal um, fundraising for, for many, many, many Canadians across the country, myself included. You know, I'm being sued uh, as one of the plaintiffs on the $400 million class action lawsuit. Uh, I don't own a truck, therefore I don't own a horn, but the lawsuit is for horns and microaggressions. Um, stupid stuff like that, right? But the JCCF is the lawyer that is representing me. And that has all been done through crowdfunding. And so some people are able to do that. Others are not. And so when you're smaller, you're lesser known. It's harder to fundraise and take on high profile, uh, clients. Okay. So you've got JCCF is representing Chris Barber and the democracy fund is representing Tamara Leach in, in their, their, uh, trial. So that's really what it comes down to. It's like, what's your ability to fundraise and, and attract high profile cases to make the fundraising attractive to the average Canadian. Yeah. What do you think, Leo? Can you hear me? I can now. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think it's, a, they're a bunch of lawyers, obviously. Right. Uh, and when you deal with lawyers, you bring money and you, the more money you have, the better the lawyers you get. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not doing it for nothing out of the kindness <laughs> of their hearts. Okay. Uh, they're getting paid the ski mask way. And uh, I just want to say, you know what, Tom, uh, you're a hero, plain and simple. You should run for politics. I'm not telling you what to do. Okay, you're, <laughs> you're, you're educated, yeah. you're smart, you're very well spoken. You're like uh, that guy to the left of you, Rick Walker. Okay, uh, make a run. Make a run. I, I ran in the Ontario election. And, um, you know, Ontario voters rewarded their domestic abuser with... 20 more seats than he had before he started abusing them. So Ontario is a pretty tough nut to crack. Yeah. Well, we're run by criminals, right? Uh, yes. It, yeah. I, I know the Ford family. Uh, I knew about the mm -hmm. Ford family before they were even, uh, uh, the mayor, the mayor of Toronto. Okay. Uh, I knew about it and I told Rick about it. I told everybody about it. Okay. And the Globe and Mail did an article on them. They're, they're crooks, right? So this mm -hmm. is what we're dealing with in politics. We need straight, straight, narrow people run in this country period okay and that's that's i would do it begins. do it i i you know what i i would be i i would have no problems for one term being the premier or the deputy premier of ontario for one term but i gotta say people would be shocked at the things that i would do well, the changes you know, i would make Half Quick. measures of bail is nothing, Tom, when it comes to politics. Yep. Do the right thing, okay? And you may mm -hmm. be you may be the man of the year. You may be a two you a lifetime politician at the end of it, right? Uh we don't see it much. That's why I want to get Brian Massey. Okay, I got right. a uh, I'm not gonna say it on here, but I'm hard as a rock to get Brian Massey okay, mm -hmm. in a corner because I wanna I wanna ask him some questions and he is the longest running NDP or out there. So, and he only lives a couple blocks away from me, and his office is only four blocks from there. So, you know, stay tuned. I'm going to bring you guys a good show, that's for sure. Good. 
Now, now Tom, you, you, Veterans for Freedom ha is trying to get this. Well, they actually do have this fund set up where people mm -hmm. are encouraged to donate on a regular basis, like even five bucks to have sort of a legal mm -hmm. fund going. How do you think this will impact efforts to crowdfund other legal challenges or, or legal defenses rather um, mm -hmm. at, in the light of this decision today? Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this does give a, a good boost to what it is that veterans for freedom are doing. And, uh, I think Drew McGilvery, he's the president of E4F. He had just kind of consolidated the books and since the inception of, uh, veterans for freedom, uh, March, right after the convoy, Drew just, uh, showed publicly that the organization has raised over $200,000 for various causes that they have sent to Canadians and not just veterans issues, although some are in there, but, you know, as an example, they've helped out Helen Groose, they've helped out, um, uh, Kristen Nagel, they've helped out several different people. They were heavily involved in trying to save the life of, um, Sheila Lewis. Uh, and unfortunately she lost her life, um, because of the dictates of, of the medical community. So veterans for freedom, you know, they do this $5, the way it works is you pay $5 into a fund per month and you have a choice to vote on one of three issues. So every, every month we get three different causes and all the members that contribute vote on the one that they want to send their $5 to. And it's the majority of the people. So for example, uh, if there's one cause that they really want to every, the, the majority of the people say, I want that, that's where all the money goes. And then the next month they do three different causes and, and that is to, to help the community. And they're not just veterans fund, uh, causes. We've raised money for Shaba Vizi, who's somebody who's being, uh, who was arrested in Ottawa, several of these different cases. There's a, a big fundraising event in February in the Niagara region. Uh, veterans for freedom will be also assisting, uh, with the organization of that thing too. So it's not just fundraising. They do a lot of organizing in logistics and communicating with police to make it safe and responsible. So, you know, I contribute $5 a, a month to the V4F and uh, I'm now selling my book on their website and $5 of every um, book that I sell through the Veterans for Freedom website goes into the fund, goes directly to them. So, you know, they're doing great things. Yeah. And, um, we're going to kind of pivot here and start to talk more about free speech, but are there any final thoughts on where this decision today, this court decision leaves us and where we're going with all this? So let's start with Leo down in the, the bottom corner there. It's gone bananas. <laughs> Pure like apples. I like bananas. 39 cents a pound. And I yeah. can't get enough of them. Uh, Tom, I just wanted to ask you a question. Uh, the, mm -hmm. We've had charter challenges. I'm uh, my background's uh, marijuana activist, right? And we've mm -hmm. won a lot. We've won every charter challenge down the road, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And there was one uh, recently where we all generated like a crowdfunding uh, yep. over 1.2 million dollars for John Conroy in wow. uh, BC to represent, and he won. Mm -hmm. Now, the guy who was uh, who had the uh, charter challenge, Jason Wilcox, got the money. What happened was they won. The courts had to give them back all that money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jason Wilcox didn't know how to give the money back because it was a crowdfunding. It was coming in from every which way okay, uh, in the country, right? Uh, North mm -hmm. America, worldwide. And uh, a lot of people don't know that. I don't know. You probably did. That if you do win court case, will you be reimbursed all that money back? Well, the, uh, the courts can award the costs to the loser. So for example, if you sue me and you lose, you're going to have to pay my legal fees and vice versa. If you win, uh, I got to pay you whatever the award is. Plus I got to pay the legal fees. So it's, a, it's always a gamble, right? You, the right. person who brings, brings the loss, who it's a gamble because just because you win or lose doesn't mean you might be off the hook, right? Somebody has to pay for the court costs and that's always the big problems. Like, you know, a lot of the lawyers, they do get criticized. I think 
somewhat rightfully so. Um, you know, why isn't there more pro bono work? The only issue is that there are extraordinary court costs. Renting the courtroom for the recorders, the the bailiffs, like there's a lot of court costs uh, that really add up quickly. That is independent of what your your lawyer is um, charging you. So the only pro bono that a lawyer can do is their own hourly rates. Uh, but they still have staff to pay. They still have all this other stuff. So that's where the costs really start to add up for the the lawyers. I think. Thanks, Tom. I, I no just to bail out, guys. Okay, uh, Gail, yeah. very nice seeing you. Rick, thank you. Tom, this has been a pleasure. You answered all my questions, and I hope Brian nice to meet you can too. do the same. I hope Brian <laughs> Massey can do the same. Yeah. But I'm on yeah. somebody else's dime. i got to pay my 66% tax to be a good Canadian and get these bananas. Ciao, guys. See ya. Thanks, Leo. See you, man. Just want to just wanna let you know I'm getting warnings from my uh, the headphones that my battery's running low. Okay. All right. Gail, uh, any final thoughts on... No, I, I was just following a little bit of the chatter in the comments about, uh, you know, various social media platforms. And, and again, what I would say, because this is what I often teach about, is that, you know, you do have to sometimes curate your feed, uh, take the best, leave the rest. I know there's a lot of controversy, whether it's TikTok or Twitter, but what I suggest is that every platform comes with, you know, pros and cons. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but I do use it for some things, right? So um, what I always tell people, find out what your goal is and how you want to use each platform. So that's all I was going to say, because there's no there's no perfect one. I mean, you, this one has problems, but it has a pretty far reaching scope. Um, but what's interesting, I see a lot more people now uh, making sure their videos are backed up on Rumble, which is something I've just come to learn more about. So it's mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, Smart. Yeah, it's interesting what's happening. Mm -hmm. So that's all just to the people that are commenting. Um, and the other point I made is, well, uh, Twitter. I say I still say Twitter. I know it's X, but I still call it Twitter. because. Me too. Uh, yeah. And uh, I heard a, a quote. They said, you know, 50% of people hate Elon Musk and 50% love him. But I'm like, you know. I like the platform. I like that. It, I like that there's so little censorship. That's that's mm -hmm. why I choose to be on that platform. Uh, that's my main reason. And uh, and I think someone else commented, you know, find out who you're following. You got to follow. It's like in life, you know, if you hang around with a lot of people who are all negative and grumpy, you're probably going to end up being negative and grumpy. If you follow people who are like to have discussions and debates and you know hear different views, then that's how my Twitter is. It's a I love there's some people I follow on Twitter just make my day. So, well, it seems to me today was a big win for the for the freedom side. It seems to me uh, that the winds of change are blowing. Mm -hmm. And even though people are very pessimistic when it comes to our institutions, including our legal system, uh, I, I, I find real hope in, in today's decision. I think, though, this will take a considerable amount of time to resolve. I don't think this will be uh, ultimately decided before the next election. I think this will run through it. I'm not sure how much of a, an impact it will have on the election uh, because I think it will be in process, not, not resolved. So I guess it all remains to be seen. But one way or another, I do agree with you, Tom. I think that Justin Trudeau's days are numbered, and mm -hmm. Pierre Polyev is destined to be the next prime minister of the country. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take a brief break, and Tom, you are welcome to stick around. We're going to talk about free speech, and very soon another uh, Maverick News contributor, Lori Spencer, is going to join us on the program to, yeah. to, to do that I, as well. But if your battery is about to die or you yeah. have other obligations, that's cool, too. No, it's, I just got my second morning from the headphones and I'm too far away from the computers to attach the cable. Um, but I do want to say, you know, I got to plug the book, Rick, you were the first one to have me on, uh, after I wrote the book in September. Um, you know, we're, we're doing okay, but the, the reason I plugged the book is not, like I said before, it's not about the money. It's this story is as much Canada's story as it is mine. And that's why I wrote this book. And, you know, for people that are interested, I did have, I've got a full chapter on chapter 19 that talked about the public order emergency commission and, and what we witnessed there. So, you know, if you want to kind of 
contrast what's happening today with what actually happened at the convoy. If you're just curious, read the book and don't read just mine. There's other good books out there. Tamara's got a book. Andrew Lawton's got a book. Kim Kennedy's got a book, you know, so there's some good stuff. Um, if you want to learn more, and this is what I always say for the people that didn't support the convoy, buy the book and give it to them. And it might change their mind and it might wake up Canadians to the, to the question that you asked Gail, why did Canadians go all the way to Ottawa? It's in the book. Hold the book up and get, get us the title and sure. explain how people can buy it. Yeah. It's called the people's emergency act convoy 20, the, uh, freedom convoy 2022 Tom Morazzo. And it's available on Amazon, hardcover, paperback, audio, and uh, Kindle. And uh, also the veteransforfreedom.ca website. They're selling the book as well in paperback. I left the note in the pri in the chat there for you, Tom, too. So awesome. I'd, uh, okay. Definitely, I think there's an opportunity to talk more about your assessment of the uh, court case today too, because that's sure. something I'm really interested in. I don't think people, I think people are getting everything all mixed up into what, yeah. what it really I, I want to read it. I'm going to try to read it tomorrow morning if I can get Perfect. a chance there to. It's about 190 <laughs> pages and get through it. Notes so. version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Right. Folks, we'll take Thank a you. brief break and uh, we'll be back on the other side of this. watching. 